it's a huge privilege to be able to say a few words of recognition about a man we've listened to already this afternoon and whose caliber was noted by me as a young man in my early days of working alongside uh, the, the think tank at Margaret Thatcher's government on inner city policy. Lord Young David, now as energetic, as entrepreneurial, as innovative, as passionate as a man in his 80s can possibly be, and with a strong determination to ensure that he persists in the journey of empowering others. There are wonderful lines to be found about David in Wikipedia. I think one of them which captured my mind straight away was this reference to him in his political career. A simple reference which pointed out that when he was appointed by the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry at the time in Margaret Thatcher's government, he took on what was to be known as, quotes, privatization. Privatization brought liberty to large numbers of state-owned enterprises. It set them free from the shackles of bureaucrats overlooking every small decision that they took. It liberated individuals, too, to think that with the assets of shares, they could create the possibility of futures. This from a man whose own background as the elder son of a businessman who imported flour and later set up as a manufacturer of coats for children. From small domestic ideas come great policy possibilities. He went on, David, to Christ College in Finchley and then to University College London to take a law degree as an evening student during his time as an article clerk to become a solicitor, being admitted to the role of solicitor in 1955. Most of us weren't even thought of in 1955. He only practiced for a year, probably found the law profession, sorry to Mish Conrad, but the law profession a little bit stiff and decided he wanted to get out and work with great universal stores as an executive and assistant to the chairman. Entered parliament, 1975, as a conservative member of parliament. In the outer room, I said to him, I wonder whether you've decided how you might vote in this election, then remembered, of course, that neither he nor I are able to vote as we are dismissed as mad and bad uh, as well, <laughs> like those in prison or uh, not fully able peers are barred from the voting opportunity. After the 1987 election, where he had a key role, he became Secretary of State for Trade and Industry and President of the Board of Trade, and many of us will remember him elegantly in that role, retiring from government in July 1989. And for most politicians, that would be the end of the story. They'd think in retirement, they'd write a book. He then became chairman of the Conservative Party until June 1990 and published his first book on the enterprise years. Lord Young founded Young Associates, a private equity house in 1996, where he remains currently chairman, as well as being chairman of a number of small companies and an enterprise advisor to the prime minister and the pioneer of the startup loan scheme. But one other small point worth noting about some of the great outcomes of Lord Young's commitment and his activity. Well, the Young Report in May 2012, it's great to have a name that makes everybody think you have to be under 30. The Young Report delivered the first part of a, of a review entitled Make Business Your Business. It was the first of its kind since the Bolton Report of 1971. Young reports highlighted the number of startup businesses to indicate a growing culture of enterprise and entrepreneurship in the UK. The report introduced a new government program called Startup Loans, and as David has already referred to, many of those startup loans have gone on to be successful and outstanding businesses. It's worth pointing out that the startup loans have so far provided 129 million pounds of loans to 25,000 people. I think we have in David Young in Lord Young, the great dude of Downing Street, the man whose innovations and interesting and compelling ideas, not only the right to the Lifetime Achievement Award for services to enterprise, but a man whose continuing youthfulness is a model example to all of us and for which we greatly respect you and appreciate you. And much as your lecture helped us to be stirred up to think greater than that, it's the inspiration of your life too that we recognize 
this afternoon. So I'm going to ask His Royal Highness the Duke of York to come and present the award. Thank you. Um, it, it's a great thing to get a Lifetime Achievement Award, except at the back of your mind, you think, <laughs> what do they really mean by this, you know? But however, I will disappoint you all. I'm still going to carry on and do things. I just want to thank you all very much. To stand for me reminds me in my time during the 80s when I was in politics, when, when the audience stood, they th you thought they were coming to get you. So I'm glad today it's not. Look, um, I've lived a most exciting life. I have seen this economy transform to something which is vibrant and full of young people. I go around and I look, and I don't envy anybody because I've been very fortunate, but I just think young people today, and I read all these nonsense stories about you know, how disadvantaged the young generation are. Never, ever before have young people had so many opportunities, so many possibilities, and indeed, if they don't have a really exciting, fulfilling life, they have no one to blame for themselves. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.